Hey everybody, welcome on into the studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, the founder of Clayshare, and also I'm gonna be your reviewer, instructor tonight, and I'm gonna do a Speedball Artista Wheel review and demo. It'll actually be a demo, and then we'll do the review as we're doing the demo, but uh, I know a lot of people are loving this Speedball Artista Wheel. I'm seeing a lot of folks talking about it lately, and it's pretty much selling out Everybody who has it, it sells out as soon as they get more in stock. I know GR Pottery Forms had some in stock a few weeks ago. They probably don't have any anymore because that's the way it's going lately with everything in the pottery world. But this Artista Wheel came to me from one of our Clay Share members, Darlene Aspinwall. Thank you, Darlene. She had purchased this wheel or this wheel was purchased for her as a gift. I'm not sure which, but she found she really wasn't using it. And we'll talk about that as well, like is this the right wheel for you or is a wheel even something you want, right? And so she knew I wanted to get one and that they were hard to come by, so she gifted this to me. So thank you so much, Darlene. I am making you some special things in, um, in uh, as a way to thank you for this. So hi everybody, hey, hi everyone tuning in from all over. You have one and do you love it? So I'll do the tech specs first. The wheel, it's a tabletop, as you see. It it's, can go on your table, but it also has leg extensions, which Darlene did give to me, but I'm probably not gonna use the leg extensions. I'm planning on using it here on my work table, which is really nice because it has these little rubber feet. I was thinking about this before I saw it because I didn't know, but if you look at the bottom here, you can see it has these little rubberized feet, which is really nice because if you have a wooden work surface, you don't wanna mar it up, right? So you can sit it on here and if you have to scooch it around, it won't cause any damage. Now it weighs 39 pounds, which is a little heavy. Uh, so, you know, if 39 pounds is hard for you, please get someone to help you. I can do 50 pounds pretty much fine on my own. Um, I actually can lift 90 pounds if the need be. I try not to, because that's a lot for me, because I'm just over that much myself for weight. So uh, this 39 pound wheel can center up to 25 pounds of clay. It has a, an 11 inch aluminum wheel head with 10 inch bat pin holes on center. So you can put your bat pins in there like I have here. It will take bats. It will take bats like our Studio Pro bat system or Speedball also has these plasti bats or plastic bats right here. So you can use these on it as well. So they'll fit on there. If you like the plastic bats. I know people love plastic bats. Um, I don't. Personal preference. Like, it, it doesn't mean anything. There's nothing wrong with a plastic bat. It'll also work on these um, little, like, MDF bats right here. And so this will fit on. And this is great because if you're gonna do bigger things, you know, you don't wanna move them and cut them off the wheel and disturb them. You just pick, pull that up and take it wherever you're going. So now the wheel comes with two buckets and it fits right here. And I think that's kind of cool. You know, you need to put your buckets of water somewhere. And in my wheel that I usually use, which is a Bailey Pro XL, they fit down inside. And this is nice that they're off to the side. And there's two. And the way I would probably use them is I would have my tools in one and then my water in the other. Or when I was throwing, I would have my water in one. And then when I wipe my clay scrap off, it would be in another bucket. So that's what I would do. One of the two depends on, you know, how, how the flow is going. Of course, you don't have to use these at all. You can just have a big old bucket and use that instead if you want to, it's up to you. Now the splash pan does come off and most of you know one of the reasons why I love my Bailey wheel is because it's got that great big splash pan that doesn't come off, never needs to come off. You just clean it with it on, because it's huge, it's huge. But this one for a removable splash pan is actually pretty easy. My least favorite splash pan to remove is the Brent. I hate the Brent splash pan, sorry Brent. It's actually Amico, sorry Amico, but it's a great wheel. I just hate that splash pan. So this part pops up and then this, you just kind of wiggle it. You lift it up and you wiggle and it just shimmies itself off. And of course, 
It always looks so smooth when you're doing it by yourself, but when you're on camera. So you can take this off, but you know, I found when I was cleaning it a little while ago that I didn't need to take it off to clean it. It really was easy to get my hands down in. So I don't know. I didn't see that as a, as a big thing either way. Look at that. On air, no problem putting a splash pan back together. And it's a nice hard plastic too. Now, I want to talk to you about the, yours doesn't have an aluminum wheel head, Mary Jane. The current models do have aluminum wheel heads. That's the, what I read on their specs. So maybe older models don't have aluminum wheel heads. Uh, aluminum will still corrode though. So you're not going to want to leave wet clay on here. You definitely want to clean it between uses. Now let's talk about how you control it. I'll spin it around to do that. It plugs in because it's an electric wheel, right? And maybe we'll go to camera two. You can see it has a variable control dial right here that we turn and then you turn it on. So you can control it while you're standing at your hands. Like, but it does also have an optional foot pedal. So if you want to, and I would get that foot pedal, that way you can control it while you're standing here. Now I would have the wheel positioned like this. I've seen some people have the wheel like this when they're working, you know, so they're this way. Um, I guess so you can like get up on the wheel and like lean against the wheel to support yourself because when I'm using this wheel, I'll be standing, which is better for your back when you're throwing than sitting down, but you need something to lean on. So I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, you this way, but I'm going to probably do it this way because the control is right here and it just seems much more user friendly. So it's a just regular 110 volt, plug it in. So let's plug this into the wall. Make sure it's off when you plug it in because you know, accidents happen when you have things on when you plug them in. Well, these, Joyce says someday she wants her own wheel. The thing about this wheel is I think, oh, I don't want to say my final like feelings yet. I want to wait till we get into the review a little bit more because if I give it all away right now, what's the point, right? And so let's turn it on. We'll just click the button. I mean, I can, hold on. We can still turn it, the cord will reach. And so you just flick the switch on and then you turn the dial. Now, my first pottery wheel was a wheel that had basically one speed. It was either on or off. But this is variable speed. So you can make it go faster or slower, but you gotta use your hand. So you'll have to, when you're working, take your hands off the clay and adjust the speed. So that could be an issue for those of you that um, you know, really want to be able to use both hands, which sort of is all of us, right? Everything looks strange tonight because we have a wheel in the hand building area of the studio. <laughs> all right, so um, if you're going to throw, you can, and you don't want to use bats, you can take your bat pins off. I'm going to throw with bats. I really like using a bat system. That's just what I'm most comfortable working on. I also don't like the feel of metal on my hands. I don't know what that is. Um, I do have metal allergies, which I know, weird, right? But I do. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to take a pitcher of warm water. Why warm? Well, it's autumn in Vermont and it's like 40 something degrees. And I really don't want cold hands. That's simple. That's the reason. And I always get my bats wet before putting them on the wheel head. Now you'll want to check for level. And that's one thing I don't want to go too much further before we do. So I have my little portable level here. And you can see I'm a little out of level, just a tiny bit. So what I would do is use some shims and I would shim it to where it gets me to level. So if you've got some shims in your studio, you can use that. I am not gonna shim right now, I'm just gonna throw. So I really wanna see how it does. Well, I wanna show you all how it does with the Wonder Bat system. So that's what we're gonna do. You're afraid you would push it, like shove it off the table? Um, well, it does have legs. And so the idea behind this is this is a wheel for somebody who's never going to want to throw more than 25 pounds at a time, right? 
somebody who maybe does just smaller pieces, someone who might be an instructor like myself that travels a lot that might need to take a wheel with them. It's a good portable wheel. Or somebody who decides, um, like I've always thought that my, my, in my golden years, what my plan would be is, you know, if Kevin and I had an RV and we could drive around and he could fish and I would have a portable pottery wheel and a small kiln and we would just do that or pit fire everything at a campsite. I don't know, you know. So it's the kind of thing that I think would be good for that. If you really want to get into wheel throwing and you're going to throw a lot, I would not buy this wheel. And I know I don't want to give away a bunch of stuff until we get towards the end, but I think every wheel has its uses and purposes and you need to know why you're buying a wheel. Like what do you need a wheel for? And this wheel is not for everybody. That's the way everything is though, right? All right, so I have a, about a pound and a third of clay here. Um, it's approximation because I didn't weigh it. I just know the side, size of it. All right, so you have lots of clay, red clay and kaolin. Ooh, I love red clay and kaolin makes our porcelain. So you're thinking about getting a new wheel shortly. So this is a good demo for that. Um, but you need to think about what you're going to use your wheel for. Like if you're going to throw a lot of pots all the time on it, I would not get this wheel. All right, so let's go ahead and start. And we're going to turn the wheel on. And I'm going to turn it up pretty high. Now, I'm throwing standing, which I never do. <laughs> so this could be really entertaining for everybody out there. Because um, I am not awesome at throwing standing. All right, so we're going to shake everything. I'm going to smack my clay. Turn it down a little. I definitely think it's worth the investment to get the wheel pedal. I have to say, Darlene did send me one, but she had let me know that it, it, the wiring was messed up in it, so I have to repair the, the variable wheel, that the foot pedal that she sent me, and I haven't done that yet. So I do have one. I just got to fix it. All right, let's turn this up, and we're going to center. And what I really want to see is how much it bogs down. You know, when I start applying pressure, well, one, one point three pounds of clay doesn't seem to hurt this this motor. This is one third of horsepower. Is the motor on this? So it's it's a decent powered small wheel. You bought that as used first wheel. Yeah, I think if you can find one of these used. Now, new for retail, the cheapest I've seen this wheel is $525 and I've seen it all the way up to $695. So there's quite a range in pricing for this wheel. So if you're thinking you want to invest in a pottery wheel and you're going to throw a lot of pots, this might not be the wheel to invest in. But if you think you're just going to make mugs, small things, nothing bigger than, I know it can do 25 pounds, but I can guarantee you it will struggle for 25 pounds. So I would definitely stick to things that are 15 or less which is most everything. I mean, when I make sinks, a sink is only about 14, 13, 14 pounds. All right, so opening it up, compressing the bottom, because we're gonna do, I, I'm gonna do a mug. I'm gonna throw a mug on this. Hey, Laurel, good to see you. So you threw a bowl for your bowl exchange, the first bowl you threw in nearly 20 years, and it's just out of the kiln today. So I think the difference with this is you've got to get used to the fact that you can't use your foot pedal to slow down. I'm going very fast for pulling up. Let me slow it down a little more. I'm also throwing with a new clay to me. Um, this clay here is Tucker's mid smooth stone spec which is a mouthful to say but it's um, 
a really pretty light colored clay with speckles, which I'm still waiting to do test tiles on. So I'm making pots with a clay that I don't even know what it looks like with glaze. It's like, I'm just going to do it. You hated this drip pan. It was a stickler to take off and clean. Glad you could get the removable pan. Oh, so this one here um, is removable. So you got one that wasn't removable. Yeah, this one here we, we can remove. And so we're going to slow it way down because I want to shape this. If you're somebody who wants to throw and you're struggling with back problems and you're looking for a wheel that will let you continue working, I think this is perfect. For me, I would have bought this wheel. I, I know. I say, maybe it's not the best wheel to start with, but yeah, I would have bought it. I know myself, and I know where I am and what I'm doing a lot of, and I know that hunched over a wheel, making mugs for four hours a day is not going to happen in my life. I can't do that. But if I have a wheel like this, that's where I'm working on hand building, and I can stand here, and I can easily throw eight or nine mugs. This is pretty nice. All right, so let's go ahead and clean up the apron at the bottom. That's the area down here. Some people call it the skirt. This is what I was talking about. You get the bucket to put your little clay scrappy bits. And if I wasn't having my camera right there, I would put that there but the camera's there, so. This could also be, um, you know, for me, because I already have two Bailey wheels. Um, you know, right now, one of my Bailey wheels is packed up. The other one is out over there where I usually film my wheel throwing tutorials. But I use B-Mix or porcelain on that wheel. I could do dark clays on the little wheel. N not a reason to buy a second wheel. <laughs> <laughs> to throw different colored clay. But listen to how nice it sounds. Like, it's really not loud. You guys hear it? I don't, I don't think it's a loud wheel at all. All right, let's, let's shape this mug. You have a three-year-old artista. And it has a skip in it once in a while. Very annoying. It bogs when you're centering three or more pounds. So I wonder, Kim, if that's a manufacturing issue with that particular one you have. I will have to ask Darlene how old this one. This is an older, this is, I mean, it's not brand new because she had it and she had used it. So it has been used in the past. But I'm not sure how much. Um, I didn't want to bother Darlene. She's had a little bit of a family emergency this week. And we've been sending love and prayers to her for her daughter. So, um, you know what? Let's just stretch this out a little bit more. Let's make this a fatty. Let me make a fat. It's time for gourds and pumpkins. Why not make a short, round, very fat, pumpkin-y mug shape, right? Make, make yourself a pumpkin mug. The one I have is removable, but for you, it was very difficult to put back on once clean. Uh, this one, um, I struggle with Brent with their wheels, putting their splash pans back on. But this one, I was, I did not like that it had a removable splash pan at first. And I was like, oh, that's going to be a problem. But I was shocked. It was not a problem. And I did it fine when I did it by myself in the studio. And then I was like, yep, but when I filmed the tutorial tonight, I know it's going to look ridiculous because I'm going to struggle, but it didn't. All right, so we're just going to put a little detail in here. I also think this is a great tool. This wheel would be a great tool if you want to do glazing or slip decoration, and you could use this wheel for that. Also, if you do hand building and you want to use the GR Pottery Form WA system, you know, that WAS system was developed to be used on a wheel. 
Not that you should buy a wheel for it, because I use it all the time without a wheel, but if you're going to get a wheel, you know, you can use that on it. All right, let's go ahead and turn this out a little bit, turning out the, the rim of the lip. And that's because we're thinking about the using experience of this mug and the way that it's going to touch your lips or whoever's using it lips. Most of the time when we make mugs, we don't use our own mugs. We sell them or give them away. But, you know, you want to think about whoever's going to be using this wants a nice mouth feel, a nice experience, right? So you want to make a lip that outward curves a bit because that is a really nice way to fit against the lip and also it allows whatever they're drinking to flow smoothly um, and not splash into their mouth, which is always nice. It isn't a wheel question. Okay. You've been hand building, hand building mugs and bellying them out. Noticing that where you're pressing out on them from the inside, you're creating some very fine cracks on the outside. Mm-hmm. They don't seem to be problematic, but how do you prevent it? So what is going on, Wendy, is two things. One, your clay could be a little too dry because that definitely happens when the clay gets too dry. The other thing, it could be that your clay is a little too thin. Remember when we're hand building, we need to leave a lot of material so that we can stretch it. If you don't leave that material there, it's going to crack. And then we're going to end up with those fine cracks, which often you can just put glaze on. They don't crack all the way through. They're superficial surface cracks. But, you know, you might not want those there, right? All right, let's turn this off. Let me grab my wire. Sorry, folks, it's over here. All right, so we did a mug, which is not a bad mug. So hopefully that will help you with that. And we'll just cut this off. And then we'll remove it from the bat. This is the Studio Pro bat system from Studio Pro Bats. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, it's Studio Pro bat system. End of, end of what it is. All right, let's put this one here. Uh, let's make another. Let's make another thing. It does have a foot pedal. I am not using, I don't have a working foot pedal for it currently, but it does have a foot pedal, which I believe would be a total game changer. Because using your hands, I can do it, it's fine, but a foot pedal would just make it even more seamless. And this bat system, you don't need to have it, but if you're gonna make a lot of mugs, and yes, I could have just wired my mug off, and then I could have lifted the mug up and put it onto a wear board, but I plan to do more things with this mug later and put it back on the wheel. So I want to be able to have a way to center it again while the mug is still fairly wet. I'm going to alter it and do some things to it. So for me and the way I work, this is a really great system. All right, we got, we got more clay. Should we make a something else? Maybe a, I don't know, you guys want to pick. You love the Wonder Bat Studio Pro Bat system. Yeah, I know. I bought the Wonder Bat system years ago too, and then when they went out of business, Studio Pro makes them as well, and they fit. The Wonder Bat inserts fit Studio Pro Bats, and Studio Pro Bats outers um, will work. They're, they all are interchangeable, which is really nice because you know when you buy all the inserts, you want to be able to have them work. Plus, you want to be able to replace them or add more to them. Am I liking standing right now? Um, I don't throw standing ever. I've thrown standing like twice, and one of those was when I was testing the wheel. <laughs> so I don't throw standing. I'm, I was taught sitting. I'm old school. I'm trying to change my ways because I know it's better for my back. But i got to tell you, when I throw sitting, Usually after every piece, I get up, I'll stretch. You know, you put your arms over your head, you stretch, you do some stretches, touch your toes, that kind of thing, limber up, walk around the studio a little bit, and then I come back. Right now, I just threw a pot, and I don't feel the need to do any of that. So I'm really uh, kind of kind of like, huh, different way to work. And again, this is the Speedball Artista wheel. And we'll make something else with it. You were considering this wheel, Peggy. So, I'm of two minds about this wheel. If you are just starting out in pottery or you're going to get into serious 
production pottery. Gonna make your living and make a ton of wheel thrown pots. Like that's the career you're going into. That's what you wanna do for the rest of your life. This wheel would probably not be the wheel you want. You know, you're looking at investing in a wheel that's about $1,200. That's not this wheel. You're looking at something like a Bailey Pro XL or a Brent, um, the Shimpo, Pacifica. There's a whole bunch of brands out there. I don't wanna be forgetting anybody. Clay Boss has a good one too. You know, I, my first wheel that I learned on was a Lockerbie kick wheel, old school. I do have a Brent kick wheel and two electric wheels that are Bailey's. And then I have this little guy, which I think could be the perfect wheel if you make pottery and yeah, maybe you sell it, but you don't plan to become a potter that's cranking out hundreds of pots a week, doing the craft fair circuit or selling hundreds of pots online. You know, this is a, it's a different use. This is what I would use this for. So you scrape your hands on this, but I don't want to block the camera. You like putting this wheel on the adjustable tables for the shorty me. Well, you know, Patty, this, I have this on my work table and I have to tell you, we built this table for my height. Like this table, I'm 5'2". Anybody who thought I was really tall, th thanks. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm a petite gal. I'm five feet two. Um, and when we build stuff for my studio, wedging tables, uh, work tables, whatever, we build them for me at 5'2". Not for anybody six feet. So anybody else working in my studio that's tall would be, uh, they would feel like they walked into like the dwarves cottage or something, you know, like a fairy cottage because it's not gonna work for them. But works great for me. So use a high stool and change the height of that helps my back. So Julia, when I throw on my Bailey wheels, that's exactly what I use. I use a very high stool. My feet don't touch the ground. I actually can be standing and I just barely sit on my stool. My legs dangle. I do use bricks to put my legs up so they're at um, you know, a good angle. But when I, I don't sit hunched, no. A lot of folks do. We talk about posture. Um, in my wheel throwing class, I talk about posture a lot. The, uh, intro, to intro to wheel throwing. Yeah, which is a free class, by the way. All right. Uh, this is a lot of clay for a mug. This would be a tankard, <laughs> not a mug. Like an autumn -y tankard. Put some leaves on this. And then you've got a really nice mug for uh, butterbeer. <laughs> so you have a tabletop one by Shimpo and you only use it for trimming. There are, I mean, there's no reason you can't use this for whatever. I know people who have wheels like this just for their glazing. They do a pouring glaze method and they'll use a ladle to actually pour the glaze onto the pot and the spinning of the wheel throws the glaze out in a pattern that is really nice. And that's what they use this wheel for. So it's entirely up to you what you do with a wheel. And I think kilns, wheels, everything in the studio, extruders, slab rollers, you need to find the one that's gonna work the best for you and what you wanna make. Definitely, if you get this though, get the foot pedal. Please get the foot pedal. I'm already, I'm adjusting it a lot, but I really, really wish I had that foot pedal. Also, this is the first time I've thrown with that Tucker's clay. So this is the second pot I've made with the Tucker's. Usually I like to make a series of pieces on the wheel with a new clay before I demo how to use that clay. <laughs> but it's working fine. Ah, oh, Colleen says we're the same height. So my studio is perfect, right? All my five foot two gals and guys. My studio is custom made for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's everything in the studio. You know, we all find ways to work that work the best for us. And what works for one doesn't work for another. 
that's fine. You know, nobody cooks, the, no two people cook the same way. Like, not at all, but still make some good food, right? All right, so we've got a nice, a nice tall cylinder. We could turn this into a bowl. So how do you figure out the best height for your table? Hip high, yes. So actually, there's, there's a couple different ways. Um, and we, gosh, I don't know if we've talked about this in a class. So you can go by hip height, but that's a little misleading because everybody's arms are different lengths. So what you honestly have to do is you have to set up a mock-up table or find some counter space or something that you can put a board on and raise and lower it. You need to put your hands on it. Um, and I don't think camera two will pick this up. Are you in the front? Because you're going to take your hands and you're going to extend them and you're going to imagine wedging. You're going to imagine working. And you're going to be putting your hands out and working a lot. And so for me, it's usually right where um, my wrists are, like right here, where your wrists become your hands. That's where I want it. And so what we did is we measured from the floor to this point, which my hip bones are actually a little higher. So if I had put it where my hips are, my table would have been too high for me. My arms are longer for my, than my hip bones, I don't know. Don't ask me to figure all that out. But there's definitely a way that works. And some people like to work, I like to work with my hands more extended. Some people like to work with their arms pulled back more. Uh, but I don't like being crowded, I like to have space. So I like to be able to extend my, my arms when I work. But hip, hip height is a good starting point if you don't know. Also, I've worked in many studios and had many different height tables to use and kind of got to know this one's too tall, this one's too short. You need a Goldilocks table. All right, now we're going to shape this. Add a little, little something to this. This is going to be a, a fat one, but not as fat as the other one. It's going to be tall. It's going to have some height to it. Would the foot pedal bend your back while standing? No. No, because you would be uh, just your, your heel would be on the ground and your foot would be angled up, you know. I'm thinking about if I had a foot pedal here. It would change your posture, yes. Um, would it be in a way that would be a problem? I don't think so. But that would be a very interesting thing to explore. When I get the foot pedal worked, out and it's and it's going again I'll I'll throw with that and we'll see because um, that's an interesting question all right so we're just throwing simple mugs mostly because I plan to put leaves on these next <sighs> if your mug gets out of hand do you like that pun out of hand um, you can collar it back in. Like if the neck gets, it gets a little away from you, you can rein it in. I really like ribs for throwing. I like how they compress the clay. Uh, I like how they help to make the um, clay tighter, which means it's less likely to flop on you. I like ribs that have some flexibility to them when I'm shaping things, but I also like wooden ribs too. So we'll use this wooden rib right here to make a bit of a shadow line. Turn it down a little. You've been five even <laughs> since sixth grade, is that what I saw? <laughs> I do yoga in hopes I won't shrink. That's my hopes. I've heard if you do yoga, you will not shrink. As we get older, you know your spine compresses and you do shrink. It happens. No matter what I've heard. Um, well, maybe not if you do yoga, right? It doesn't. Maybe that's the, the, the what you can do to avoid shrinking. I don't know. Folks that are older that are doing yoga, have you noticed you didn't shrink? <laughs> 
I know. Is that a weird question to ask people during a demo? All right, so ask me questions about this wheel. It's really easy to use. So far, my experience with it, which has only been a week with it, has been great. It's a secondhand wheel, so it's already been used by somebody else. So, you know, I'm not the first person to put my hands on it, so it's had a little bit of um, wear and tear, but none so much that I could notice. If, if you could find one used, you probably could get a really good deal. I would, I would buy one without hesitating. I mean, I would have bought one, I would have like tried to find one and bought one new if um, Darlene hadn't sent this for me. We have the Artista and the legs that are available and the foot control so you can sit and throw. Exactly, and uh, Sharon, at the beginning, I did mention it, you can get the optional legs and foot pedal. All right, that's, that's a good shape mug. Wire that off. Maybe we'll do a bowl or something. Bowl or something next. Because the cartilage in your back compresses with age, so you lose height. That's what I had heard. Yeah, your spine compresses, right? The cartilage in your spine. Hmm. So is there a way to decompress that cartilage so we can be, um, or is that just too bad? We all are going to shrink. And this one, this wheel right here is made by Speedball. So what I love about this, it's, it's all wheel throwing tonight on this. But if you do use GR Pottery Forms, the WA system, other forms out there, you know, this is great for that. It's great for glaze decorating if you're going to do that. If you're going to do slip trailing and you just want to squeeze the slip, out onto the piece or paint the slip onto the piece. This could be spinning while you do it and you get a perfect circle. Like it makes it so easy to achieve that. Like there's a lot of nice things about this wheel. Did I not grab? I thought I grabbed a towel. Oh. Can never have too many studio towels, right? At least I can't. How much table surface does it take up? Um, we, well, you know what? <laughs> I got a wear board. I can use that to measure. Um, this is an 18 inch long wear board. So I would say 18 and 20, it's about 20 to 22 inches in one direction. And I would say it's about 15, 16 in the other. It's not taking up a ton of table space. Uh, you know, and the fact it's 39 pounds, so you would be able to lift it up and put it back on a shelf when you're not using it. For me, um, I have no idea where it's going to live in my studio. I hadn't actually thought about that. Let me see if I can get the Instagram folks closer. Hold on, everybody. Let's see if I can get you guys in so you can see the, the happenings there on the pot. You want to see a plate? Um, plate's not going to work on this Janice because of the bat I have, but we can do a bowl. And I've got one more lump of clay. We can do a plate on a lump of clay. I mean, on another bat with that lump of clay. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, you can't do a plate on a small bat unless you're making a small plate. And I have um, too much clay. But not too much to do a bowl. So let's do that. You'd like to see a plate. Um, I do have quite a few wheel throwing tutorials. If you guys really want how to throw pots tutorials, uh, you could check them all out on ClayShare on the ClayShare app. I do have a wheel thrown plate class. I have a berry bowl and plate class. Um, I also have a wheel thrown. Did I do my wheel thrown spoon rest or did just Kevin Kowalski do his? Your hubby built you a table into a Nook, that is size for this. <gasps> Debbie, Debbie, I have to see that. I need a nook built for me. Well, for me, see, I can take this if I go teach a workshop somewhere. Sometimes I teach at places that 
are um, community centers, not clay centers that don't have wheels. And when I go teach at those places, I usually just do hand building tutorials and demos and, and workshops. But this would mean I could take this wheel with me when I go to teach workshops, which if you are an instructor, this could be nice. I know a lot of people who are art teachers and you don't have a big budget for your classroom. This wheel is great for your students to use. Yeah, take care. Osteoporosis, I, I know, I, I think about that. All, all of us out there, all, all the women, you know, we have to take care of our bodies. All right, let's make a bowl. I had a little lump of clay on there. Let's slow it down a bit, though. If I make a bowl at that speed, we're going to, it's not going to work. <laughs> I'm just going to straight out say it won't work. So the biggest learning curve for me has been getting the variable speed to where I want it for what I'm making. That has been the big um, learning curve. Press my bowl back in. Again, I have a bowl class, wheel throwing a bowl. We did a berry bowl, which also could be a colander if you want to make that. Um, I think I did a medium sized bowl. We have a, a tea bowl, which is also great as a small bowl, like an ice cream bowl. All right, we've got to slow it a little more. This is going to be a little bowl with a nice big foot on it. It's going to be. So since this clay is new to me, I don't really know how thin I can go with it. I've never thrown a bowl with this clay. When you're throwing the side walls of a bowl, if you make it too thin or it's too wet, they tend to collapse on you. And this is the first bowl I've ever made with the Tucker's mid smooth stone spec. Someone should talk to them about the name. <laughs> MSSS. We'll just change it to that. All right, I'm going to shape the outside. Bowls are easy. Um, you know, when you're making pots and you're starting out, you're always going to want to make bowls. Cylinders want to become bowls. So there we have a simple bowl. Let's go ahead and just put a little detail on the inside here. I'm just going to compress and throw down the sides. That just gives a nice continuous curve all the way down to the center. And I just put a little swirl in there. That'll show up later. Like that little, it's wheel thrown swirl. Let's turn it down a little more. Often I will use a bit of chamois to compress and smooth your rim. But if you don't have chamois, the webbing in between your fingers, um, when I was a student, we didn't, have, we didn't all have chamois. So we would use the webbing in between our fingers and you just lay that on there and you just compress it. Looks good. You need to leave all this clay here on the bowl because this big lump of clay that's sitting here right now, I'm gonna trim it a little bit, that's supporting the wall, believe it or not. So if you try to take that off now, you will distort and destroy your bowl. So what you want to do is leave that there, and you'll just trim that off after the bowl is dried up to leather hard. So I see some YouTube folks asking, do I wedge when making small balls from a block of clay? Um, when I wheel throw, I wedge, yes. And I, I cut them into little blocks, and then I wedge those blocks. When I hand build, I do not wedge. I just cut my clay in half lengthwise, and then I just pound it out and roll out a slab. So here we have very simple bowl. Be a good little um, cereal bowl, ice cream bowl or something. Plate. All right, let me change bats because plates. And I don't have a ton of clay for a plate either. 
To make a dinner plate, you need uh, five pounds of clay to make like a 10 inch dinner plate. You need a lot of clay because you're gonna trim a lot of clay away. It's just how, it's how the nature of making plates is. All right, I think this will come off easier apart. Put that up there. I'm gonna have to clean up my work surface. And so folks on YouTube, I do have my own app. It's called ClayShare. And you can download that app. And I'm, I'm able to keep up with the comments there a little better because YouTube's um, like platform for interacting makes the text so tiny. <laughs> and I have comments from three other streams that I'm keeping up with. So I try to keep up with everybody. You didn't know about leaving the big foot to help support the walls of the bowl, Amy? Yes. So if you're working and you're finding that, let's talk about that for a sec. Let me grab it back. So you can see that big foot there. We're going to trim that away. But what would happen if I tried to take it away now? I would be taking away the support and the walls could collapse. So you do have to leave that big chunk down there and you will trim it all away after. All right. So this is a 12 inch bat that I'm using. My chickens are making a ton of racket out there. Like, they might need to be checked on. Kevin's going to go check the chickens. Good. Go. Barbara has no volume but perfect video. You close out and log back in. Nothing. I am so sorry. Facebook does that, and I can't control it, and it's very frustrating. I agree. Yeah. All right, so this ball of clay, I cut it out. I'll show you. Hold on. Since, I mean, we've got a few more minutes. Oh, and did I mention we're doing a giveaway tonight that we're going to be giving away a rolling pin? What? That's right. We're going to be giving away a rolling pin. And the way you enter all of our giveaways, you just go to clayshare.com, sign up for our emails. That's it. Premium members, we got you covered in our private broadcast. Don't worry. Use this year this wheel for six years of production, pretty much daily throwing. Since then, you've upgraded. Right. I think this is a perfect beginning wheel. I think it's a great wheel for somebody who's going to want to teach with it, um, you know, someone who's going to want to travel with it or just do a little bit of stuff with it. Now, this is what I do is I take my block of clay and I cut it. And then depending on what I'm making, you know, I know this is too big to make anything a mug with but if I cut it in half it's good to go right this would be a good size bowl that's probably about three three pounds my scale I don't know where my scale is to tell you the truth honestly <laughs> scales missing all right so then you take these little blocks and you just wedge them and in my intro to wheel throwing class I have a whole wedging tutorial. And I show you three ways to wedge. I think we do spiral, bull's head, and uh, um, just regular fold over wedging. I tell you, it's been four and a half years since I filmed that class, so I honestly don't remember all of it. I need to, I need to have somebody review my class and tell me what I did. <laughs> all right, so we have about two pounds of clay. I would say it's two pounds of clay maybe two and a quarter. So this will make a small plate. It won't make a big plate. And so I'm just going to smack it. I'm sorry for the shaking. I do that because I want to seat it nicely to the wheel head. All right, so we're going to get this wet. Let's center. Let me turn. My definite recommendation, if you get this wheel, get the foot pedal. You will thank me. You want to go faster when centering. And it's such a pain to have to reach down there with your hand and adjust it. All right. So we're making a plate. 
And so I went from centering right into a disc because plates are big fat discs. That's all plates are. Anybody who's trying to like freak you out making plates thinking they're something fancy, they're not. They're just a big fat disc of clay, right? And so compress it out. You cannot go too thin because when you wire it off, it's gonna, your wire is going to flow up and then you're going to cut through the bottom of your piece. So that's pretty thick for a small plate, but that's what it needs to be. And so we're just going to start compressing in. I'm using my sponge. Because it gives me a wider surface area than just if I use my fingers. Kev, what's up with the chickens? Well, well Hermione wanted us to know that she just laid the world's greatest egg. Is it a great egg? Apparently it was. She's very talkative about it. <laughs> Alright, so we've got our, our plate blank basically right here and we'll turn it down a little bit and we'll go too fast and then get it wet and just like everything else we're going to open it up so we go down a little bit and then we just start pulling back nice and slowly You can use your fingers like I did. You see, I really, really like using the sponge because it gives me that wider surface area. So this was two pounds of clay. Definitely, I would move up to you know, three pounds for like, this will be, end up being a small dessert plate, salad plate. But if you wanted to do something dinner plate, you're going to look at five pounds of clay. All right, so you can decide how smooth to make your plate. I like to... Put a good chunky throw ring in there. If you are like, oh wait, no, no, that's too chunky. We can't have that. All right, well, you just take your rib and you pull it all out. We're going to do the rim. Hold on. It's part of the process. I know everybody's like, but that's not the plate. It's not done. It's not done. Maybe we'll do a more subtle. All right, so that's the inside of the plate. And then to do the outside right here, get it nice and wet. You're going to take your finger, and you're basically going to jam your finger under. And then pull up and out just a bit, and kind of pinching it. And that makes that lip. So that's our plate right there. That's the foot ring right there. And you can make it tall and deep. I'm going to slow it down. Ooh, going too fast. The mid smooth stone spec is a very uh, wet clay to begin with. So it's easily saturated with water. It becomes what's called exhausted. And that's when your clay absorbs so much water, it loses plasticity and will slump on you. So I can feel the clay needing to be thicker to support itself. Oh my goodness, chickens. All right, so we did a little plate. And you can make the rim as wide as you want. You know, you just don't pull out as far. But be warned, when you make rims over an inch and a half, they tend to slump. Also, a little tip, if you're worried about slumping, make your rim slightly angled up. And if it slumps, it'll just slump downward in the kiln. So there's a small plate. It's not a big one because I didn't have enough clay.
You had slumping many times. The rims like to slump on you. It's what plates do. I think that's their purpose, right? Let's cut this one off. And so I just take my wire, press it flat to the wheel head, and pull it straight through. Just like that. And the wire does flow up as you're doing that, but that's okay. We would have trimmed that all off anyways. So there we have a plate. Pretty easy, right? All right. What time are we at? Is it time for some giveaway? It's time for a giveaway. We're going to be giving away a rolling pin tonight. Now, let me just fix everybody over here on, on Insta so they can see what's happening. Put you back up. Yay! All right. So we're going to be doing our giveaway. This is our last giveaway for September. You know why? It's the last Wednesday in September. That's why. So I can't, I can't September giveaway. Last li share live giveaway, we have more in prime time next. But I'm going to be giving away the winner's choice of either my Monstera or my Wave rolling pin. Kevin has a name for me. Now, those of you who've reached out that haven't been able to order yet, hold on Instagram, folks. I'm trying to fix you. Um, here's the thing. We took orders for four days, and in that four days, we had 500 rolling pin orders. 500 rolling pins. Think about that in four days. It takes me an hour to make one rolling pin a 12-inch and 30 minutes to do a small one. So if you figure out 500 times an hour, that's 500 hours. Most of them were 12-inch pins. So... We're catching up. Our second laser machine came, and we're going to be, um, you know, cranking them out. But we will open up hopefully in the next couple weeks for everybody to order again. And I will be adding my older designs, and I do have a new design. I'm going to just slowly put it out, and we'll have limited edition on that new design too. So, all right, are you guys ready to find out who won? I'm excited. I always like giving stuff away. Next month, October, our sponsor is going to be Michael Harbridge from Learn Fired Arts. And he is going to be doing some promos, some specials, a couple demos with us, and probably have some giveaways. So stay tuned, and I'll have information about that as we get into October. But for tonight, the September giveaway winner of their choice of either the Monstera or the Wave 7-inch pin is Wanda Turner. Ms. Turner, you've won yourself a rolling pin. Woohoo! All right, so this was fun. You know, we decided to do the giveaway this month for September to promote the pins. I did not realize that 500 of you would buy pins. I thought maybe like 60 people would buy pins and I wouldn't be backlogged this much. I mean, that's honestly what I thought. I thought they'd be 60, maybe in my dreams, 100 orders of rolling pins. Did not expect 500 in four days. That's insane. For only two designs. Like, it's not even my full lineup of 20. I have 25 designs. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. But it's good. Um, I have two Christmas designs that are part of my lineup that will be coming back to y'all as soon as I can catch up with the orders. We'll have our Christmas ones. I've got my sweater texture, my knit texture one. And then I have a new one that I wasn't going to release, but I really want to put it out. We'll see. All right. So the Artista wheel from Speedball, my final thoughts on it. Would I buy it? Yes, I would. Because I know me and I know my uses and what I would have a wheel like this in my studio for. I mean, exactly what I just did. Because I teach people live and do tutorials, this is perfect for that, as you saw. Right? It was great. I was easy. It was easy for me to work here. Also because I could be hand building and easily pull my pieces over if I wanted to use this with hand-built pieces as well. Uh, it does 25 pounds of clay, although I'll never use it for 25 pounds of clay. It's really easy to take with you, so it's very portable. It does have a foot pedal you can get. That's extra, but I would, I would get it. Some places might be including the foot pedal when you order. I don't know. I know GR Pottery Forms had some, uh, but I'm not sure if they have them anymore, so you'll have to reach out to grpotteryforms.com. The, I think the other place someone said, who else said they, they had, do, 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 do. I'm trying to see who else said they have it. I will need 10 machines. Um, so we have a third machine coming in December. Our plan is to add a fourth and fifth machine next year. 
and we will see where we go after there. We are growing at a rate that we will probably have to hire employees other than my daughters to work um, the machines because they are not able to work those hours. Like it's just not possible. So we will probably have to actually, oh my gosh, it's just kind of crazy. I don't even know. I can't thank you all enough. I'm not complaining. I'm just shocked and very appreciative. And we'll um, do everything I can on our end to make everything happen. All right, I gotta go because I have another broadcast to do at 6.15 and some of you all will be there. Everybody else, I will see you next week for ClayShare Live. It'll be the first one in October. I believe I'm doing it. Although Michael Harbridge is joining us for the month, I don't think he's doing one next week. I think it's the week after, but I gotta double check. So I'll post what's happening later, probably early next week for you all so you can see what's happening. All right, everyone, take care. We have a new pumpkin plate class and pumpkin platter class up on ClayShare. So if you haven't checked those out, they're very seasonal. Check those out there. You will love them. And everyone else, get out there and make some great pots.